rests upon the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the given curves about the specified axis. We have y equals zero, y equals cosine eight x, x equals pi divided by 16, and x equals zero, rotated about y equals negative five. So I've already graphed the bounded region to the right with rotation about y equals negative five, which means you have rotation about this horizontal line. If we rotate this region about y equals negative five, we get the solid shown below. We will determine the volume of the solid using the washer method with rotation about the x-axis or a horizontal axis. Well, the volume is equal to pi times the integral from a to b of the square of big R of x minus the square of little r of x differential x. To help us set this up, let's sketch a rectangle that would represent one washer of the volume. Because we're using the washer method, the rectangle is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So let's use this rectangle here We'll notice how the thickness is delta x, which is why we integrate with respect to x. Big R of x is the outer radius, which would be this length here. Little r of x is the inner radius, which would be this length here. Notice little r of x does not change. Little r of x is always five, the distance from the x-axis to y equals negative five. And big R of x is controlled by y equals cosine eight x, but big R of x is not just cosine eight x, it's cosine eight x plus five. And also notice the limits of integration will be from zero to pi divided by 16. So let's begin to set this up. We have the volume is equal to pi times integral from zero to pi divided by 16. And then we have the square of big R of x, which is the square of cosine eight x plus five. And then we have minus the square of little r of x, which gives us the square of five. And now let's begin to simplify the integrand function. The square of cosine eight x plus five is cosine squared eight x plus 10 cosine eight x plus 25. And then we have minus 25. So simplifying, we have the volume is equal to pi times integral from zero to pi divided by 16 of cosine squared eight x plus 10 cosine eight x. Let's continue on the next slide. The next step is to perform a substitution for cosine squared eight x by using the power reducing formula, cosine squared x equals one half times the quantity one plus cosine two x which means cosine squared eight x is equal to one half times the quantity one plus cosine 16 x. For the next step, let's distribute the one half and write this as three separate integrals. We have pi times integral from zero to pi divided by 16 of one half dx, and then plus the integral from zero to pi divided by 16 of one half cosine 16x, and then plus the integral from zero to pi divided by 16 of 10 cosine 8x. Notice how we need to perform u substitution for the second and third integrals. For the second integral, we have u is equal to 16x, and therefore differential u is equal to 16 dx, dividing both sides by 16. We have 1 16th the u is equal to dx, and for the third integral, we have u equals 8x, and therefore differential u is equal to 8 dx, dividing both sides by 8 we have one eighth to u is equal to dx. So now let's find the antiderivatives. The antiderivative of one half with respect to x is one half x. And then we have plus one half times the integral of cosine 16 x, which is really the integral of one sixteenth cosine u, which gives us one sixteenth sine u or one sixteenth sine 16 x. And then we have plus 10 times the integral of cosine eight x, which is really the integral of one eighth cosine u, which gives us one eighth sine eight x. 
let's go ahead and simplify. We have 1 half x plus 1 30 second sine 16 x plus 5 fourths sine 8 x. So now we need to find pi times the difference of big F of pi divided by 16 and big F of zero. I'll let you go ahead and check this. It comes out to approximately 4.2354, which does give us the volume of the solid if the boundary region is rotated about y equals negative five. I hope you found this helpful.